Hello everyone, in this straight cam video, we're going to look at the Arrhenius equation and afterwards we will try some question. To write the equation is k equals to a e negative ea over rt. k is the rate constant, a is the frequency factor, ea is the activation energy, r is the gas constant with the value of 8. 0.314 joule per mole per kelvin and t is the temperature that needs to be in kelvin so in exams if they want you to write the arrhenius equation you have to write the equation like this and you have to define all of the variables you have which is k a e a r t the relationship between all of the variables in the Arrhenius equation can be understood in a more direct proportion. And how are you going to do that? We're going to convert the Arrhenius equation by multiplying with ln on both sides. So you can multiply ln over here and multiply ln over there, and you should be able to get a format that can be used to understand the relationship between all of the variables. So let's have a look on how we're going to do that exactly. So we have multiply ln on both sides. Okay, so you can see over here, I have put ln over there and ln over here and the um, negative EA over RT is right there already and this E sign over there will be gone because you have ln on that side. And then after that, when we rearrange the whole thing, when you rearrange this whole thing over here, you should be able to get something that resembles the straight line formula. Okay, you have ln k, so ln k is going to be your y axis and then negative ea over r and this one will be the gradient so if we can find the gradient of your straight line okay if you can find the gradient of your straight line we can find the value of your ea because r right here is a constant which is 8.314 and the x axis will be 1 over t and the y interception c over here the value will be ln a so if we can find the um, y interception we should be able to find the value of a so the y axis will be ln k so y axis is right over here so it's going to be ln k and the x axis will be 1 over t so you're going to write um, one here you're gonna have one over temperature okay because from the equation it tells you that the y-axis is ln k x-axis is ln t uh x-axis is one over t now since it has a negative slope as you can see over here so the m is the gradient or slope has a negative sign so your your straight line will look something like this okay and bear in mind that point over there should be your c which is ln a okay and if you do something like this, you should be able to get your gradient. And the gradient, remember, represented by this. Okay. If you want to solve problems with two temperatures, so this is a very typical problem that they might be asking you in exams, but you're always going to see this in your exercises. 
they're going to give you problems that involving two temperatures. So we have to modify the formula a little bit, the one that we have seen right here just now. We will modify that a little bit and then you're going to have this formula over here. So this formula is be is going to be used when you want to solve problems involving two temperatures and this one involving a single temperature problem. Okay, so ln k1 over k2 equals to ea over r1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. So don't forget, you do not have a negative sign over here, but for that one you have a negative sign. For the um, solving two temperatures, the negative sign is no longer going to be there, and the arrangement of this is important. You have K1, K2, T2, T1. So just remember, okay, you can just use the um, technique 1, 2, 2, 1 to remember that, okay? Now let's have a look at the first example of um, problem regarding to Arrhenius equation. Right, in this question, it wants you to find what is the rate constant for that temperature. So we have temperature given 300K, okay? So the temperature is 300K. So we want to find the rate constant for that temperature and the activation energy given as 111111 kilojoule per mole. And we have the A value given to you as well. And we need to find what is the rate constant for that temperature. So which of the formula that uh, you need to use? Since in this question, you are only involving one temperature. So we have to use the ln k equals to uh, minus Ea over r times 1 over t. And you have the ln a at the end of it. Okay, so you're not going to use the 1, 2, 2, 1 formula. Okay, so step one. So let's have a look at what you need to do first in order for you to solve this. So as usual, we have to find what the question gives. Okay, so the question gives you all of this information over here. The one that we have, um, I have mentioned just now. Okay, questions gives you this information. It's very important for you to identify what the question gives. Then you know what to do next. And the question ones, we have mentioned about this just now. The question wants you to find the rate constant K. So that is the fundamental of solving a problem. So you need to find out what the question gives and what the question wants. Then you will be able to judge um, which formula that you need to use in order for you to solve this. So now we need to find K and in step two, we can proceed by using the correct formula. So over here, we're going to use the ln K equals to ln A minus EA over RT. So it's the same as what we have right here so it's the same thing as what we have over here it's just that when we rearrange this you're going to get um, the equation that resembles closely to the y equals to mx plus c so if you want to use this or if you want to use this one for the problem that we have in here it should be okay okay it shouldn't be a problem so we're going to use this formula to solve this. So you're going to plug in all the value inside the one that we have identified. Okay, so you have all of the values given um, in the question. So you're going to substitute that into the equation. So you have the value of A, which is 2.1 times 10 to the power of 9, um, minus with the EA. Okay, so when you look at your EA, 
um, the okay. value is 111 and you have K, you have kilo over there. So don't forget to include that kilo because you need to have that kilo over there since your R value, okay, 8.314 is in Joule, okay? So when you have kilo Joule, remember to change that to times 3 to the power of, uh, times 10 to the power of 3, okay? So when you substitute all of the value inside, you will be able to get something like this in the end, okay? So in exams, if you are wondering of how many marks you will be able to get this, you will be able to get one mark for identifying the correct formula to be used and one mark for identifying the value of K. Next, we need to solve this question over here. This one is going to be slightly different because um, the question wants you to find the rate constant at 200 degrees Celsius. But the question gives you um, rate constant. You have the you have the rate constant over here at a different temperature, and you have the activation energy, um, which is two hundred point eight kilojoule per mole. It doesn't say anything about um, frequency, um, the value of frequency a. So. Um, which formula that you need to use. It's obvious that in this problem, it has two temperatures. So when you have two temperatures, we need to use the one, two, two, one formula, okay? Ln K1, K2 equals to a, Ea over R, one over T2 minus one over T1 formula, okay? I call it the one, two, two, one so that it's easier for me to remember um, the formula exactly. Right, so step one, so the basic thing that we need to do to identify what the question gives, and the question gives all of these information right over here, and if you look at the temperature, what have I done with the temperature? We have changed that into Kelvin. You must cha change that into Kelvin because the R, the gas constant, is in Joule per mole per Kelvin, okay? So the temperature needs to be in Kelvin. Um, you have the Ea as well, and also that is in Kelvin, and Ea is given to you. Therefore, in step two, we're going to be using the what I call the 1, 2, 2, 1 formula, okay? Why one two two one? Because you have one two two one over there. So we're gonna use that, and you're gonna substitute the value inside. And finally, you should be able to get the answer, which is this. Okay, so you get you get the K two. So K two is for that one. Okay, this one is 4C2, right. So you get one mark for using the right formula and one mark for identifying what is K2 for T2. So we're going to move on to a question right now that will be involving you to plot a graph in exam. So if this question is going to be appearing in examination, you have to plot a graph. When you read the question, the question wants you to plot a suitable graph and determine the activation energy Ea for this reaction. You have a data over here consisting of temperature in Kelvin. So the temperature is already in Kelvin, so you don't have to do anything with that um, anymore. And you have the K, you have all of the rate constants for different temperatures for the reaction to the converted into G. So the first thing you need to do when you get this kind of questions in exams, 
and it's very important for you to do this is for you to convert the table into one over t and ln k so you have to rewrite this table over here in your um, answer scheme okay you need to include one over t you're going to change that 700 so you have one over 700 then you get that value over here same goes to the rest of the temperatures and you have to change k into ln k and you will get um, values as such by having this um, modified table if you will in your scheme of work um, most of the time they're going to give you this whole thing over here you're going to tick they're going to give you three marks for the complete table okay and then step two you have to plot the graph okay right here i have the graph plotted and as you can see it's a um, straight line with the formula of y mx plus c okay so this is the y okay that is your m x plus and that is your c um, when you plot this graph it's important for you to always remember the title so that one should have one mark and the axis they need to be correct you have one mark you have a good straight line you have one mark and um, after this when you want to find the ea you have to find the gradient so speaking about that in step three this is when you need to find the gradient based on the plots the gradient m if you do a triangle over there to find the gradient you should be able to get a value closer to negative 21881 so the gradient should be negative 21881 okay so that is the gradient based on your plots of graph and then in step four we have to compare the m value with the formula to find your ea all right since you have this so you're going to compare that to find your ea you're going to compare the negative ea over r with the gradient that we have found from the plot so this is how you're gonna do it if you want to find the ea and remember r over here is a gas constant so when you have that you have your ea this is the value of r and that is the gradient that you have got from your plots and when you change that to the other sides the negative will cancel out you will have the value of ea equals to 181.92 kilojoule per mole always remember to have your units okay units is very important without your units you will not going to be able to get your mark so for this you will have one mark for that and by finding the gradient also you will get another one mark